fearless and truthful. Provocative and controversial. We say it like it really is. With dignity and respect. Committed to free speech and common sense. Upbeat and entertaining. Straight talking and direct. We may agitate each other and you. Thought provoking, provocative and controversial. Hello and welcome to the pledge. Such was the faith of everyone on this programme that we'd a splendid World Cup special plan full of flags, shirts, terrible football puns and a fair bit of gloating. But we all know what happened on Wednesday night. So come on, guys, we're going to have to sort this lot out. On your head. <laughs> come on, everybody, let's get it done. Coming up, Phil says the PM's time is up. Michelle cries foul over baby Trump. I argue police should get their priorities straight. And Rachel joins the waistcoat fan brigade. <laughs> but first, Greg, anything you'd uh, like to talk about? Well, the whole nation is in mourning. We're out of the World Cup. But don't be sad, we did brilliantly. We reached the semi-finals of the competition for only the third time in our history with a young and largely untested side. And we did it playing a totally new formation for an England team. When I became chairman of the FA five years ago, I set the people running the England setup a challenge to win the World Cup in 2022. A lot of people, particularly journalists, laughed at me, but the guys at the FA took it seriously and put up a clock in their offices at St George's Park, counting down to the tournament in Qatar. Well, no one's laughing now. Our England youth teams are doing better than ever, and after our success in Russia, we must be one of the favourites for 2022. So to those in mourning today, I'll quote Bob Dylan. Now ain't the time for your tears. Dry your eyes, look forward to four years' time. OK, Greg, excuse the pun, I'm going to kick this off yeah, straight right. away. Just by pointing out that, yes, the squad did well, OK? They did well, they were all right, OK? Southgate's done a tremendous job with what he had, all right? Which is a squad that's young, inexperienced, with no playmaker, yep. OK? Let's just have a look at what old Danny Baker had to say about it. And Danny, said, Danny says, Gareth, your team couldn't have given any more, but was not. And he says, too many interviews start with that. He said, instead of, Gareth... They were there for the taking. What the f went wrong? <laughs> All right? Well, I'm, I know Danny Baker well. I used to be his... I know he's a mate of yours. And um, he's not always right, you know, about football. I mean, he supported Millwall for many years. <laughs> so you can see that. I, I... They may have been there for the taking. I doubt it. I, no, I thought that... I mean, I think... To be honest, right, Italy didn't even make it. Brazil were knocked out. Germany went. So, in terms of decent teams that were left there right at the end... We must have, this must have been one of the best shouts we ever had. Mm. And we completely... We no, were missing yesterday we, yeah. after the first goal. Well, we got to the... I mean, if you take the first half, we could have had two, Should maybe have. three goals. Should have. And if we'd had two going into half-time, then it might have been a very different result. Yeah. But in the end, the quality in that Croatia side in midfield... Took oh, yeah, over, Modric took over on his Modric own. Modric, Modric if Modric, Modric own, had been on our own. side, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'd have won Just that broad, easily. Just broaden it out for people who are not perhaps as, as much into <laughs> the football as, as you two lads. And by the way, I, I subscribe more to Phil. The thing that fascinated me is the papers the day after England was knocked out, three of the headlines, actually three of the best-selling newspapers in the land, all called them heroes. Now, to me, they're not heroes. They're people who are doing their job. The blokes who swum into the caves in Thailand, they are heroes. With respect, These that is my, we're going to talk about heroes late. later in You're the programme. I think we need that. to focus on the football oh. and whether Greg's right but in the, looking doing, forward, it's the, ro the road doing, is clear. No, they're, do, they're doing a job. And they didn't do it particularly well, well against what should have been, what should have been, to keep Phil's point, 
and, and suddenly the whole nation is engaged, and Gareth Southgate says that in a way it united, and well, when there's a degree... That, they had the great advantage of going there with no pressure, didn't they? No one thought they were going to do anything. No, which was good. And what you found is, as the competition went on, the pressure from here grew, I suspect. Yeah, I think all the It's Coming Home hype really weighed on them in the end. I well, mean, I felt, I felt that they didn't go in the underdogs. It always favours them being the underdogs. What, what do you mean, how would they, how know? Would they know? How would the team well, know? in the Daily Mirror. Of course they right. know. Social oh. media a massive, Nick, a how would part. they know? Well, the whole country I think, went I mad. think we all got swallowed up by yeah. the fact that, you know, the first two games we won, the first one, you know, the, you know, Tunisia wasn't convincing, but we beat them. We scored six against, you know, pub side of school. side scored six against Panama, honestly, do you know what I mean? And then we went in, we played Belgium's B team. Yeah. OK? Are they beat us? But Greg, and you know, we, a country and then we, and then we won, won a game on penalties, and everyone's got excited again. We would we could not beat a country that has three million people. Well, last time we didn't beat Iceland, Iceland. who had two hundred and fifty thousand. So, I'm not, so I'm not where, getting where is your optimism? Why is your where is your because optimism? Because I because I think this is a journey, and I think we're only yeah. partly through the journey. I mean, when I was at the FA, we a lot more money was, has been invested yeah. in the management of the football of of elite football, basically, at the FA. And I think you're beginning to see the results. You're seeing the results through the youth teams yep. that are winning World Cup. I was going to bring the youth teams into yeah. it, and they have had quite a good run, haven't they? They're very good. But yeah. what the, the real test now is, can those kids from those youth teams get enough first-team games in the Premier League to actually get it so they mature? And that's, that's the problem. That's one of my problems, is that, you know, all right, it's OK winning somebody as another 21. If you're any good, by the time you're 21, you should be in the first-team squad anyway. Yeah, but yeah. you can't get into most first-team squads, certainly of the top sides in this And squad. this is... Look, my, my son played the academies. He was at Southampton. He did a couple of other academies. And he never broke through. And this is going from grassroots stuff, because he was told that... Every time you went to a club, it's easier for them to just get something off the shelf from anywhere in the world. Well, it is, it's true. And, and if, I think that's where grassroots is failing, is failing the system. I don't think um, grassroots is failing the system. I think the system is failing grassroots. But can we just there are good that? kids coming yeah. through. There are good kids coming through, but they've got to get experience. Do you think this is going to help the development of English football as opposed to the whole international market in football? This result. Yeah, I think. Well, I think what's been happening at the FA in the last three or four years is helping because yeah. I think a there's much bigger investment in grassroots football yeah. in terms of facilities. But I think secondly, the a lot more money was put into St George's Park. Remember, this is the first England manager who's ever been based at St George's Park and part of the whole FA f elite football structure. Up to then, they, the manager was separate from them. Uh, you still reckon they can win in 2022? Oh yeah. So oh, genuinely, okay. you yes. put a money and bet on it now. Yes. A hundred pounds. Yes, you bet you hundred pounds. I'll bet you a hundred pounds. If I'm still alive. But, but it is at ten to one. Isn't no, it? it's not. <laughs> no, it's a hundred pounds. You're on. Right. You're on. We definitely. What Sorry, I Eagle. think is I've had a whale of a time these last few weeks and I'm not going to pretend that I can sit here and join in discussions around techniques and formations and squads because I'm not a football expert. But I... Neither is he, don't worry. Well, <laughs> I have had a fantastic time watching yes. the game. We're all very glad to hear it, I, Michelle. Yeah, and I feel on a serious level that... We've been in a country which has been so fragmented and falling out with each other for such a long time. And I obviously have watched the games in pubs um, up and down no. the country, yes. <laughs> but I've been... The people watching these games and coming yeah. together and supporting different religions, different colours, different ages, yeah. different classes, everyone's come together. And I would really like to see this country embrace that positivity, not let it go and somehow move forward with it. Yes. And my yes. final point, I've really been interested in seeing St George's flags everywhere yes. because I think for too long they haven't kind of flown proudly and brightly and I would like to see that continue, those flags being and out and about. what's great is it's black faces and it's, uh, it would appear, mm. Muslim faces. It's yeah. All yeah. 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 And the other great yeah. thing about this squad, I think, and I'm sure you'll have a view on this, Rachel, is that the, I hate this expression, wags, but any wives and girlfriends, have not gone on grotesque spending yeah. sprees. They've behaved as a really no, decent bunch. The human. kids are there, they hug their dads at the end of it, they yeah. hug their husbands or boyfriends. Mm. I think the wives and girlfriends are a fantastic team as well. Would you agree? Uh, the wives and girlfriends had, didn't do what they did in Baden Baden, did they, when they just paraded up and down the just high street, kind of with all those bags, yeah, yeah. you know, in their very high heels and their tiny, tiny So it's a very shorts. grounded squad. I, I thought again... you were going to sort of say about actually how the squad has, you know, immigration has built the England oh, squad. Phenomenal. And that yeah, has unified true. the nation too. Yeah. And I thought yeah. what Gareth Southgate said, my God, he is a prime minister in waiting. <laughs> he can't eat everything. Oh, don't, don't, oh, well, don't I'd do be, that I'd, to him. I'd have like... him. Um, is that as prime minister? <laughs> 
No, well, that, that's Phil's topic. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, um, he's just a no, very nice... What Gareth nice Southgate said about how man. the country has been very divided and how, whatever the outcome of the semi-final, it has unified the nation. You're right, yeah, Michelle. Think, it did, for, yeah. own, for too short a time. I think people have not got to worry about football coming home because, in my opinion, it never left. Yeah, it was our exactly. sport. We gave it to the world. That was our gift to the world. We've let everybody indulge in it. We've still got the best league in the world in the Premiership. We have, I mean? so, we have, but yeah. it's not, but it's mainly... It's not, but it's been our gift to the world, that's what I'm saying. The Premiership players. now is mainly clubs that are owned yeah. by foreigners, yeah. managed by foreigners yeah. and played by foreigners. Exactly. I mean, and that's the problem. Until you can get more English kids coming through that structure... Which was my point about my yeah, son going yeah. through the thing... And until told you get more shows. English kids getting a game... Well, wasn't that something you tried to achieve at the end? It is. It yeah, is. And it's not, if we look at this stat here, we take a quick look. In the last ten years, the proportion of British players in the Premier League has barely changed. It oscillates between 36% and 40%, with the exception of just one season. And despite this, of course, England have achieved more at this World Cup than previous tournaments, and thanks to transfermarket.co.uk for that. So, still not the level that I would imagine you would want. But it's quite interesting to look at that team and see how many of them didn't come from the top clubs. They started in the Football League. There's yeah. about yeah. seven of them started in the Football League. Well, Maguire and Vardy, yeah. yeah Maguire, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm afraid I think we're going to get straying into extra time and there's no penalties tonight <laughs> on this one, all right? So, uh, I'm going to nick it off you there and I'm going to run straight into mine if I, if, if I can. If there's one thing I know about, it's the importance of keeping your troops in line. Discipline, trust and total unity are key to the success of any operation. But someone seems to have forgotten. Tell my old mucker, Theresa May. She's meant to be in charge of one of the biggest changes this country's been through in decades. But she's lost two of her top cabinet as ministers in a week over a botched deal that would see us leave the EU but without many of the benefits us leavers voted for. Theresa May should be driving this country forward. But in reality, she couldn't drive a hot knife through a knob of butter. <laughs> It's time for her to step aside. Come on, Muff. Chalk. Chalk on. <laughs> <laughs> and let someone take control who actually wants to give the people of this country what they voted for. A proper Brexit. Where we're free from the EU for good. Oh. Well, Phil, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. Because what we found out after two years and however many months is Brexit does not mean Brexit. However many times Theresa May no. said it, it turned out it doesn't mean Brexit. No, no, Brexit what it still means, means Brexit. is Brexit in name only is the deal on the table. As Brino. you say, Brino, two cabinet members have already jumped the ship, the sinking ship, I might think, I might add. And your argument is get rid of Theresa May and everything will be fine. You are just plain wrong. No. You can't no. change. The Give singer, the people what they want, if, and you if you can't deliver, change out you go. the song. No. How would it no, make no. any difference? Phil? Bring someone in who's got the back. Do you know what? You need someone who's got a bit more Trump in them, a bit more stand up. Can't think who you're speak thinking out, about. Stand up, speak out, and do what like it says who? on the tin. Like I don't know who, but they need to find someone. Yeah, it's not my job to find hang someone. Hang on, hang on. I don't Can know. Can we just who. have a bit of Somebody reaction? needs to step up to the plate, oh, right. okay, and take on what the people wanted, which was Brexit. But surely the position we're now in. And the position of Theresa May is that she loses both ways. It's a rock and a hard place. On the one hand, she can't get her... She won't get her proposal through the House of Commons. And on the other hand, if it goes to a hard Brexit, that won't go through the House of Commons. So the truth is, we are... As I say, in a rock and a hard place, and I have no idea where we go from well, here. Well, she might bizarrely get it past the EU. We heard that um, one of the reasons that's caused it front is that she she says she can't change the Chequers deal, much as you'd like her to, because it has already been approved by Angela Merkel. Downing Street, we, Downing Street have denied let's it. Have let's have a quick butchers. Yeah. So, I'm yeah. not a politician, yeah. all right? I, and I admit to that, all right? So I'll just, have but let's have a butchers at what it's John certain. Longworth's got to say. Yeah. We'll take the bump out of it. He's, he's got a load of wig-wig things to say, but... And wig, then he wig. sums it up quite well at the end, and I can understand okay. it, right? So let's have a butchers of what he's got to say, yeah? I believe that the government went about this wrong, wrongly from the very beginning. They should simply have said to the EU, we're going to go to WTO, Global Trade, uh, in, in March 2019, and left the door open and invited the EU to negotiate a free trade arrangement, like a Canada-style deal, if they wished to do so. A hard Brexit, so-called, means free markets, free trade and tax cuts. What's not to like about that? Exactly. And, May, if you can't deliver that, step aside and give me someone that can. Can, can we hear what Theresa May said she was giving the people? Said, yeah. Said in the Commons. Mr Speaker, this is the right Brexit, leaving the European Union on the 29th of March 2019. A complete, a complete end to free movement 
taking back control of our borders. Nick, you were um, a marginal Brexiteer. Yeah. Mm. What do you think today? It's an utter dog's Brexit, is how it's become. I hear what you say. I, I would still just probably vote Brexit, because I look at what's happening in Italy, I look at what's happening yeah. in migration, and I honestly believe the EU as it is currently formulated cannot continue for the next decade or two. I really think... And I've always said, did Britain get out at the right time? Probably not. Does Britain need to get out? Yes, I think so. But, Phil, it's too late. There's a crunch meeting in October, by which time we're meant to have our position. The White Paper's been put out this week. There's another meeting in December. And blow me sideways, in March of next year, we're coming out. We haven't got time. We're saddled with the team. Going back to the football analogy, you might not like the striker and you might not like the goalkeeper in the midfield. That's what we've got, chum. There's nothing we can do. It doesn't do. matter. You need to, you know, they're, they're it not having enough time in the military is an excuse. You get the job done. They're paid a lot of money Respect to get the job done. What do you mean, get the job I mean, you're sort not this, this sort of mess out. Sort the are, Brexit mess up. Are you the sort of head, what they voted for? But are you the sort of headbang? Last point, just yeah. who just says, you know, almost Trumpian. You walk in and you stare uh, Juncker and everybody down and you say, right, chum, that's your lot and walk out. Is, is that what you're saying? That's what I'd like to see. So that's, that, 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 but, that's, but you that's can't sort of get that sort of through the House of Commons. No, you will not is... get it. For any, no chance. No chance. So in which case, that won't happen. When we did our predictions at the end of last year for what was going to happen this year, my prediction was you're going to have a general election. I still believe that. I still believe it. October, November. Yes, yes, because I think there is no solution. There to is this. money, and that's, that's the worst there thing that's out of all of this. In, in, in sort of like when I've talked to people down the pub, the, wor the worst thing that they have seen from all this is that it's been such a mess. It's just going to open the door to Corbyn and his crisis. Well, do you know what I think? Two mm. things. I think first of all, shame on Cameron's government for not doing any preparation work whatsoever well, as to we what are where we are. Like. No, I know. Well, that's just the first thing I think because I think that's terrible and it's put us on the back foot. The second thing I think is uh, shame on a lot of these MPs that have been backstabbing, um, trying to create problems for Theresa May. I think it's been terrible. So would you back the checkers, Fudge? Um, well, no, what I think, um, Rachel, is people You're haven't MP. got... She's the Prime Minister. Would you back her? Well, yes no, I think, no. That, I think that the checkers thing is a, is a bit of a farce, actually. Right, so you wouldn't? So you wouldn't. No, but How what? about you? Well, I think that she's happy. made the best of a terrible hand here, but she has managed but, but to alienate now M Remainers and Leavers. Yeah, but if you were an MP, would you vote for this? Would I vote for that? Well, it's not... When it comes to the deal, probably... Yes. I'll I give would. it... It was a poison yeah. chalice, all right? It was a poison chalice from the start. But if the Remainers and just kept on moaning and everybody reunited and got behind it... Oh, it's it all everyone else's it would, fault. No, 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 it's not... It's actually some people's fault, because when you vote, if you lose, you've just got to go with. All right? if you think and people just dragged their feet right, and they right, stalled no, and they were, oh, we can't Phil, do this, we can't Phil, do that. They should have just gone with what they were told. Would you be happy with country? a no deal? No deal. Go off the cliff, no planes, but no medicine, no agency. If that's what it takes to get short of Europe, yeah. I have nothing but respect for your, what you did in the British military. But running a democracy and running a yeah. government is not the same as being in the We army. voted to leave. Yeah, and we're still in it. No, we voted for... We voted narrowly to leave. I don't care if it was not overwhelmed. I don't care if it was not. We voted to leave. The majority of the people in this country said leave. And the others moaned about it. And they dragged their feet and they stopped the whole thing. So here's the solution. Hold on, Phil. Sorry. The reality check. With her deal, we are we will leave the EU. We will just no, surrender all be a lot of our sovereign and down and, you know, we will be, have it won't be the deal that we that we asked for. Result. Well, who, hang on, you didn't all ask for the same deal. This, no, is, the this, is, this is the problem. The whole problem yeah. is that everybody who voted out, there's this lot and this lot and this lot and this yeah. lot, and they don't like them, no, they don't there's like sovereignty, them. There's sovereignty, there's immigration, there's everything. The, the, the irony of the whole thing is that Cameron started it to heal the divisions <laughs> within yeah. the Conservative Party. No, I think the too. Conservative Party will be out of office for 20 years after this, because it's a shambles. Mm. Um, should we hear what Boris Johnson had to say about all this, by the way? Uh, Brexit should be about opportunity and hope. It should be a chance to do things differently, to be more nimble and dynamic, and to maximise the particular advantages of the UK as an open, outward-looking global economy. That dream is dying, suffocated by needless self-doubt. We have postponed crucial decisions, including the preparations for no deal. There you go again, postponing decisions. They shouldn't have been postponed. People should get behind the decisions. But they made. didn't have a majority for those decisions in their own party. But they had a majority Bre for the overall picture, didn't they? So no, they had a majority for a thing called but Brexit. You've got to ask Rachel what you make of what Boris Johnson said. I've got to ask you. Well, uh, you know, he, he's a great uh, marketeer of hope and... 
positive positivity and you know we can be all those things but we can be all those things within the eu without surrendering our sovereignty well, can we be those and handing over deal, large the sums of money can we be those things with the checkers i think that it's problematic because what we're doing is we're exchanging pooled sovereignty for vassal state but and i think that is a problem for everybody the problem is this is the same boris johnson who when business expressed legitimate concerns yeah. basically said F business. Yeah, he's certainly not that, denied yeah, it. Yes, yeah, he's not, not denied, denied it. it. In which case, I mean, I think Boris is over. I think we've seen the, the rise and fall of Boris Johnson is quite interesting. Can we hear what Donald Tusk has in, in reaction to exactly that point? He tweeted, politicians come and go, but the problems they have created for people remain. I can only regret that the idea of Brexit has not left with Davis and Johnson, but dot, 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 who knows? So Tusk thinks that there's a possibility, possibly of a third option, you know, bad deal, no deal, and, and maybe... Maybe we don't Maybe leave. we stop Paul's oh, Article 50 you, you have and we're to in leave. a transitional fudge no, forever. No, just Rachel, like, right, drop tools, retry. No, <laughs> you <laughs> have to leave. Look, Britain. I'm just saying what yeah, he yeah, says. Yeah, yeah. I think no, EU thinks Britain we're in has such to leave a in some way, shape or form. It does have to leave. It does have to leave in some way, shape or form. Or we have the people's vote on the final deal. And if the final deal means no, crashing out, no, we will vote Because then it. people like Phil, respectfully, will go nuts. And yes, I understand I'm saying, why. Fine, people like More Phil, they, they, won, they won marginally <laughs> last time. They're going to lose marginally. No, 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 no. no. Something tells <laughs> Not me on this is going to go on <laughs> and see on us all and out. on. Yes, <laughs> anywhere. Embarrassed. That's how I feel, by the decision to allow a massive blimp shaped like Donald Trump as a baby to fly over Parliament during his visit to the UK. Don't get me wrong, I do have a sense of humour and I can see the potential funny side of the bloom. But the humour of allowing it to fly over Parliament during his visit, meaning it's highly likely to be those images which will be beamed worldwide, however, is totally lost on me. In a post-Brexit world, assuming that ever happens, we will need to be allies with Trump in America, not be exposing him to officially sanctioned ridicule, which I am sure he is petty enough to hold over us. Frankly, the Mayor of London should have better things to do. Whether you think Donald Trump is a tool or not, we must always be wary of stooping to childish ways of making our point. Because trust me when I say to everybody out there who thinks this is funny, it is Donald Trump who will have the last laugh. Mixed reaction to that, Michelle. I don't think we should not protest against someone because he or she is deemed to be very powerful. We have a healthy right to protest here, and if people want to take to the streets, as indeed they will, or indeed they have, uh, good luck to them. I agree. Coming to the balloon, I was absolutely appalled by the balloon. I think it's puerile, and I'm very grateful for the production team to, because I can read you the quote that London Mayor Sadiq Khan, who has to give authority <laughs> for this balloon to proceed. And he said, quotes, it's not for me to be the censor. OK, let's go back in time to when London Mayor Sadiq Khan started his term. What was the first thing he did? He took down advertisements in Bikini. the tube that showed women in bikinis. Yes. So he can censor pictures of... By the way, we live in the West where girls, if they want to wear bikinis... It was Beachbody Ready, wasn't it? I don't remember the name of the company, yeah, thank you for that. But we have images of men in shorts and images of girls in bikinis. So that can't run on the tube, but the man who's not the censor does that on the tube, but allows a balloon to fly, which I think is, sends out all the wrong messages. So just before I yield, of course these people should protest. It's healthy, though, protest. Don't worry about the size, the power of the man or the woman involved, but this is wrong and sends all the wrong as you, your messages. And Mayor Khan has disgraced the office. Agreed. Nick, I'm totally with you. And um, I know that old Nigel Mill, mate, Nigel Farage, he, he had something to say about this as well. Does any of you seriously think that if an application to fly an Obama blimp of Obama as a young crying baby above Parliament Square when he came here last during the referendum to tell us to vote Remain. Do you actually think that would have been allowed? You can't stop people, as I say, protesting, expressing their opinion. But I do think this sort of never-ending war of words, and it does cut both ways, because the President invites a fair bit of it, but this never-ending war of words between Sadiq Khan and Donald Trump is frankly ridiculous. Yeah, so that's what that's what Nigel Farage had to say. And to be honest, you know, in all seriousness of it, you really would. Nelson would have got his eye back before you were allowed to put a blimp up with a bomb on it. He really would have done it. I think, would never have it. I think everyone's really overreacting. I'm just saying my piece. Um, 
I think Donald Trump's absolutely thrilled. He's one of these people for whom any attention, bad or good, is better than none. He, he won't mind at all. But plus B, his, his retinue and his cortege won't even see it. I know cortege is the wrong word. That's for a funeral, isn't it? <laughs> his, um, his motorcade won't see it. And I think... Sadiq Khan was absolutely right not to not to stop it. I mean, we have free speech in this no, country. Really... So this is what this is what uh, oh, the spokesperson for Sadiq said. The mayor supports the right to peaceful protest and understands that this can take many different forms. His city operations team have met with the organisers and have given them permission to use Parliament Square Garden as a grounding point for the blimp. It sounds like a Greg, you've run very good title for a novel. Greg, you've run big organisations. Just put yourself in the seat of the Mayor of London. Would you have authorised the flying of this balloon? I think he would have lost either way. I think he'd get this sort of flack if he'd said yes. And I think he'd get a lot of flack if he said no. I'm like you. I don't, I don't care that much. It's quite, interesting to, it's quite interesting to read the guy who's organised it all, a guy called Leo Murray. He says, it's on everyone who knows the difference between right and wrong to resist this grotesque excuse for a president when he comes here. He needs to be run out of town, oh, figuratively yes. at least. But how? This is a man who lacks the capacity for moral shame. Liberal outrage just makes him smirk harder. Exactly. To really get through to Trump, you have to get down on his level and talk to him in a language he understands. Personal insults. And you've only got to watch Trump this week. You know, he's so rude, this man, about all sorts of people. I mean, you know, you meet him on Angela Merkel and you think, this man is... So then do you lower yourself to his level? No, you don't. Well, but that's are. what this balloon is. They are. But that's the, my point. The balloon, it's that's a the point. stunt, Michelle. You it's know, it's terrible. a, it's a yeah, fine it's, it's, tradition it's gonna, it's of, of stunts. You know, he might not personally <laughs> see it as... In fact, he'd probably ride home on it if he could. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, he'll probably he, he won't put it in so the much, White House. But... You know, what sort of message does that send well, out? It's just these who is going to be, Who is going to be offended Ooh. by it? If you're actually, interesting, looking through the research, did you see this? When they asked people who, who liked or supported Trump, only 11% in this country but liked you can, or supported But you can dislike Trump. him. I, I, I'm sorry, Michelle. I think you can dislike him, but I just find this. So when these, these images of this blimp going over Parliament, well, you know, you're in the media, this yeah, will yeah. be broadcast so but far I'm and wide. By, I'm, I'm offended by what it does to the office of the president. I am offended oh, by that. See, I'm because offended by what Trump's doing to the office. Okay, yeah, quite so, right. so, so we must I respect the office. No, no, you, have you, to... you can't respect an office when it's when it's, when there's a clown in it, and we've got a clown. What? So you lose all respect? Yes, for I the think you lose respect for the presidency. <laughs> well, he wasn't. He didn't get majority. For the presidency uh, of the United, you lose all respect for the presidency. No, I of have enormous respect for the United States, who I think will but remain our closest. Long up. after Trump, yeah, is but gone, for the office, they'll remain our closest. I think, I think you're on a ally. peninsula there, Greg. No, don't you must respect the office, not necessarily. Well, the you do respect the office, but, oh, you, but there's no point. But if you've got a clown in the office, you've got to make your protest felt. Mm. Is my view. Yeah, but do you know the US Embassy, they've issued a warning to American citizens here to keep a low profile during his visit in fear of violence. It's one that's of the first times they've ever done that. That's and I think that is disgusting because I think, what kind of country what? do we want to be? Because if you disagree with Donald Trump, and many people do, and that's fine, there's a very fine line between protest and provocation, I think. And actually, when we've got a country where the, the American citizens are being told to keep a low profile during this visit, You've got plastic balloons depicting children and, and Mickey taking. I just think it's embarrassing. I think we as a country should be better than that. We should be more tolerant than that. And we should lead by example, not lower ourselves but to this level. This is the American embassy making a warning. I don't think that warning is justified. I personally don't think there'll be agree, Americans agree. attacked on the yeah. streets or anything like this. Well, they obviously yeah. feel a need yeah, to. Yeah, but that's to because issue that. that's... No, this is just a retaliation. This is a game. Yeah, it's game. It's but it's a game. this is my point. We're lowering ourselves yes, into something that's ridiculous. I just think, bust, that balloon should not be flown. Do you I mean, and we wouldn't be having this conversation. The idea was ridiculous. Go back, you know, if you want to make a. So process, you don't believe in the expression. Oh, in a free expression, that's just stupidity. 35,000 people paid for. Yeah. I've paid for this. This balloon has been a wild million. success because it's managed to trigger people but who would have ignored it otherwise if they hadn't been talking about it all the time. It yes. doesn't speak for all of London, and no one owns London's air effectively. So now we're taking advertising in London's air, and it certainly doesn't represent my view. I no. certainly have issues with Trump, but I, so where do we get to put out? 
where, where can I have a nice Trump balloon? Well, presumably anyone can do this if well, they get permission. The, have you seen the campaign to do a Sadiq Khan one mm. as a baby? And that's mm. raised an absolute fortune. Money. Yeah. yeah, it's like, where do you draw the line? Like, what, every week you've got a different mockery blue and it's like, but, come on. But Sadiq Khan, this isn't his balloon. They came along and they said, yes, here, is no, our, no. here is our proposal. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he's got to find a reason for turning it down. Now, I agree with you. I, I mean, say someone had come in the royal wedding of one of, um, of Harry, I don't think that would have flowed. Harry playing strip billiards yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I don't moment. think that would have flowed. <laughs> Shall we look at what the government thinks? This is um, the, the Cabinet Office Minister, David Liddington, uh, PMQs on Wednesday. This country's relationship with the United States of America is uh, probably the closest between any two uh, democracies in the West. Because of the security cooperation uh, that we have with the United States, there are UK citizens who are alive today who might well not be alive had that cooperation and information intelligence sharing not taken place. And it is therefore right that we welcome the duly elected president of our closest ally. We welcome him, if that's what we've chosen to do, and we don't proactively operate state-sanctioned ridicule. It's not state-sanctioned, is it? Come on. Well, hang on. The mayor of London can't see. It's an office of London. It's a devolved decision. Yeah, but maybe Trump is. thinks it's funny. He'd laugh at us all being so earnest about it. It's it's a joke. Come on. It's, it's it's silly. If it was in your back garden and I turned up at your barbecue, yeah, I might think it's funny. It's not a joke. Um, you wouldn't get in her back garden if that was a funny. Well, yeah. <laughs> but it's I'm not sure a joke Woody, doing it Woody like Johnson's probably going to get a crossbow and fire fire it down anyway, yeah. wouldn't he? Why do they do that? I they doubt they do that. I think that would be thrown up there, don't we? Thrown up the big pin on the end of it. Right. Time for an end to the hot air. You're watching The Pledge on Sky News, and up next, I'm taking on the lunacy of criminalising a compliment. Is this... <laughs> ..a crime? I only ask because in the eyes of a bunch of deranged campaigners, apparently it is. They've successfully argued that their local police force, Nottinghamshire, should treat misogyny as a hate crime. And possible offences include the following. Threatening or aggressive behaviour, unwanted sexual advances, upskirting and online abuse. So far, so sensible. However, they've also included whistling and leering. And when I interviewed one of the campaigners this week, she said complimenting a woman on the way she was dressed, unless I knew her, was also a possible crime. Give me a break. In the two years Nottinghamshire police have practised this lunacy, how many people do you suppose have been convicted? Answer, one. Our police have far, far better things to investigate than this student debate-style nonsense, and it insults the genuine victims of hate crime who suffer as a result of their gender, their colour, faith or possible disability. They're the ones who need protecting. I kind of agree with you. Um, I had a really interesting experience uh, after the World Cup game, the last one at the weekend, and we all poured out from the pub onto the street, and one of my friends, everyone was trying to get past, and there was a lady wheeling a push bike, and one of my friends, who was a guy, when she walked by, slapped her on the bottom. Mm. And I was really um, pleased to see the reaction to my friend, and it came from other men. So other men stopped and said to my friend, whoa, that's not acceptable, you know, you shouldn't do that, da-da. So actually, I think that we're in a situation where men are way better these days than what they yeah. ever used to be. I think that's they're m way more aware of what women would probably decide. Of course, there's some uh, wrong uns somewhere yeah, along the line, and I'm not disputing that. But I think that you need to be careful. When you start classing everything as a, as a crime, to me, it dilutes what crime actually is. Someone wolf whistles you as you walk past them in the oh, street. I think it was awesome. I'd be like, yes, I've no, still got no it. No worries at all. No, I wouldn't be worried. But I will say that. So if you if you wolf whistled me, I think yes, I have still got it. But what I would say, I was walking down the street also a few months ago, and there was a house being renovated, and there was builders at this side of the pit on the roadside 
builders in the front garden and a few of them in front of me and when I walked through them and I had to walk through them I did actually feel quite uncomfortable because they were like being quite leery and I actually had my I put my keys with my keys my keys sticking through as I walked through them because I felt quite threatened and was intimidated. Was that physical or sort of sexual of fear you had there? I think that they were Mix quite um they were just leery and lechy and I just felt unsafe I, I did feel unsafe I didn't like that. When, because it wouldn't be if, when your wolf whistled on London streets <laughs> been or anywhere. about 20 years now. But when it happens, <laughs> how do you react? Um, I, I think that I take, it, I take it more as a compliment. I certainly don't take it as a hate crime, which is where I think the problem is. Yes, with these with, campaigners. I think it's to do with terminology. Um, calling what men may intend as a sort of saucy appreciation a hate crime is just apples and pears, and I think it's wildly uh, using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. And I think that the evidence from Nottinghamshire, where this has been rolled out, and I think that actually police chiefs are debating extending it nationwide yeah, across the country, this whole idea that misogyny is a hate crime. Well, I mean, I think what the campaigners for women's rights and equality say, the Fawcett Society, is that misogyny is still really well, widespread. Can we just hear what they say? And then we'll go back to your point, which is misogyny is so widespread it has become normalised in our society. As a result, women are routinely objectified and harassed. Unless we challenge it, this won't change. We have to start calling misogyny out for what it is, a hate crime. Now, I have a real problem with the words hate crime. Yes. I, I do agree. <laughs> I think it's too F strong. We, can we find some, another way of describing well, these, let's turn to Phil these verbal first. things? A, it's not a hate crime, is it? Because you're whistling yeah. <laughs> because it's fit. You know yeah. what I mean? That's what the reason the bloke's whistling in the first place, because he finds yeah, her attractive, so he doesn't hate her. Exactly. That's for That's for sure, OK? And I just think there's more things for the police to concentrate mm -hmm. on yeah. than this stupidity, and they're just recategorising and calling things something that it isn't. But, yeah, police forces closed almost 48% of cases and never even found anybody. Mm. We'll get looking for that other 52% that other or something like that, because there's more important stuff to go on with here, isn't there? Do you know what I mean? A wolf whistle, if it, if it yeah. proceeds more than a wolf whistle to something maybe even hands-on or something oh, a little yeah, bit more absolutely. intimidating, then that's a crime. But if it's just a, well, you're right. Greg, how much has this been coloured, would you say, by the hashtag MeToo debate? I don't know. If you look, what's that quote again that you had? Forces Society. Yeah, the Forces so, Society. So it, I, thought it was, I thought it was fine until you got to the last oh, no. two words. There's something wrong with Just that. remind everybody, just, just it read says, it there. It says misogyny. We have to start calling misogyny out for what it is, a hate crime. No, you have to start calling out misogyny for what it is. Full misogyny. Stop. Yeah. misogyny. Misogyny. But then you've yeah. got to be able to define misogyny. And it, is it... A wolf well, or is I've it got the definition. Of the, yeah, it's the hatred of women. It's the yeah. dislike of, contempt for, or ingrained prejudice yeah. against women. OK, define that. How do you define that? Is that well, a, I wouldn't define is that a wolf, wolf whistle? No, no I wouldn't well, define it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's I, I wouldn't mean. define it as a <laughs> shout. I wouldn't. Define. And that's, I suspect, why there's only been one prosecution. Because mm. actually, I think the police bias. How, 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 how do you prove it? How do you prove it? How do you prove it? Whereas someone, as your experience of someone walking, you're pushing your bike and a bloke slaps you on the bum. Then I think the, there's an argument about that. I think it's so unacceptable. Of course, you keep the stuff. I, I'm very. I was on a tube once, and this guy was very close to me. It was very busy. It was rush hour. He was very close to me, and I could feel him rubbing, and he was rubbing against me. And I'm, I was first of all, I was thinking, is this because the tube is moving? And then it dawned on me that it wasn't. And I turned around to him and said, "Excuse me, I do not appreciate you rubbing yourself against me. Can you stop, please?" And he was like really embarrassed. Then he got a bit angry and said that he wasn't doing that. And I was like, "Yes, you are, and I don't appreciate it." Pack it in and then it kind of then he just stopped and he got off and and I think that sometimes if you are being treated in a way that you shouldn't be or you're not comfortable with you need to have the confidence and the oh, courage Michelle. to say right. not every girl's like you you're had, a no, business woman you appear on the telly the very come worst, on Michelle. the very worst I could categorise this as is threatening behaviour now yes. threatening behaviour is defined by someone of normal firmness of mind fearing for his or her own personal safety now if somebody gets into your space if they're overbearing with this Monogyny, yeah. then that then that is threatening behaviour in a way, isn't it? Because yes. you're causing me a personal of, and by the way, I get whistled at all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Not um, right. It, it's causing that person to fear for his stroke, her own safety, and yeah, that is a that crime. Threatening behaviour. Think something. I just remember. I think the reason the police think it's worth calling it out and making women report it 
is I think that if it's not checked at catcalling okay. stage or wolf whistling stage or groping stage, it can escalate. Let's just hear yeah. what the police are saying. This is from Nottinghamshire Police and Crime Commissioner Paddy Tipping. Quotes, our approach towards misogyny is first and foremost about supporting women and reassuring them that this type of behaviour will be treated extremely seriously. We also want to send a powerful yeah. message to society that behaviour which yeah. denigrates, marginalises and disrespects women is never acceptable and will be challenged. And the last one from me to the Crown Prosecution Service, which is a definition of hate crime, which is important in the context when you're asking yeah. definitions, Greg. Uh, CPS, a hate crime can include verbal abuse, intimidation, threats, harassment, assault and bullying, as well as damage to property. Now, Greg Dyke, my reading of that, verbal assault, intimidation, threats, harassment, assault and bullying does not include whistling. No. Well, but, I mean... I... I mean, what would you expect the police to do in these circumstances? Hope, if someone complains, they should go to see the guy involved or the guys involved and give them a very tough warning, yeah. shouldn't they? Yeah. And yeah. You really if you've say, got a gang of you, builders yes, permanently If you do this them. again, yeah. this is not going to be Can I acceptable. just raise one thing with you? You used the word lunacy and deranged yeah. in your queue. Yeah. And I was sort of on board your bus, but... I think that you don't acknowledge. You the word bus, no? I don't Your think family, you yeah, <laughs> acknowledge the the statistics regarding violent crime, sexual crime towards women are ninety, you know, ninety nine, almost all violence is male on female. And I think that you have to acknowledge that it can start with assaults in the street. I was assaulted in the street very badly when I was a teenager sorry, I didn't by know. a man who was literally just waiting for a random woman. I'm sorry, and I, I was 19. No, it's fine, but, but you know, but don't you see, he would drag but, me over a wall and it was because I was female. Do you okay. see? So but you have to understand you, that I, I do, there is male, but, uh, verbal but and physical assaults on women but, continuously. But what you and we live with this when okay. you walk down the street. Okay. But what you endured yeah. Right, as a kid, I, I kicked is him not and the screamed and ran away. Okay, yes. good. It's not the same as as Michelle being wolfed. No, but about. my but, point but is these things are, are aligned. They but, are well, they are not, are not completely separate things. You can't treat them as the same. What you? Why do you think the police are involved though? If they if they don't think because that this is a part it. of violence against women and should be stopped. But why only one police force in the entire country? No, well, country? as I said, they're just yes. discussing rolling it out. But they because they've been bullied into it. Because the evidence they've been bullied. Look, 87% of people thought making misogyny a hate crime was a good idea. That's quite high. Yeah. And 64% of women said that they'd altered their behaviour to avoid harassment, such as changing the way they dress, avoiding using public transport, or speaking out less online. And that's... Mm. That worries me. I mean, you've got 64% of women that are... Because I don't know if we're doing this debate a disservice by focusing on the whistling, because I think everybody would yeah. agree that the whistling is ridiculous as a hate crime. That's not what it is. But there must be more to this, because a woman, or anyone for that matter, but a yeah. woman, <coughs> must be able to walk down a street exactly. feeling that she's not going to be grabbed, groped, Thank you know, you. intimidated yeah, I am and We're agreed on that. So I must blow the whistle, and we have to move on to the next topic. Coming up, why I think Gareth Southgate is a hero for our times. A man does his job, looks smart, polite, seems kind and above all nice, and we all fall in love with him. Instant hero status. It helps, of course, that Gareth Southgate swept the three lions into the semi-finals of the World Cup, but his coronation tells a story. We have been long starved of heroes in public life, or even men behaving well, not badly. It's to do with the absence of war, of course, but it's also a commentary on the level of discourse and quality of leadership on offer, that the world melts when the Japanese football team cleans its dressing room or the Navy divers shrug off suggestions of knighthoods for bringing the young Thai footy team and coach alive from the underworld. Isn't it odd, just as politics plums the depths, drama in Russia and Thailand has been supplying the national, nay international heroes and civil supermen our hearts desire. <laughs> I'm not sure I could describe Gareth as a hero. Oh. I, would, I would describe him as um, 
And what I like about him is he reflects, I think, what modern management and modern leadership is all about. That actually the day... And football has been very slow to embrace all that. I mean, football is still about, you know, kicking yeah. boots across de dressing rooms <laughs> and shouting at people and all the rest. And actually Gareth doesn't do that and hasn't done that and I've yeah. got a lot of time for it. But I don't think that makes him a hero. I, I think your divers mm. are heroes. Mm. I think to have... God, and, you know, one of them died. Yeah. But yeah. I think to, to take that risk with your own life and be prepared to do that to rescue people, that's a real hero. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I think what some of your guys do in the army is a hero. They're heroes, do you know what I mean? They're real heroes. But you don't think these divers are heroes? Of course they're heroes, yeah. Oh. And I think all the, some of these public service people, you know, the, the, the policemen that wrestled the, the sword out of Giza and the, the one that got mm. shot, yeah, they're heroes as well, OK? They're, they're the real heroes. Getting a, getting a football team to the semi-finals? Yeah, Gareth, you've done a great job. You're a great bloke, and I admire the style of his, of his management. He's done a really good thing. You know, he's listened it's to other... He's, he's done a tremendous thing. He ain't a hero. Isn't that the he's key? He's not a hero. It, the, the word hero is, like, stamped on anybody who does well football, nowadays. the football team were heroes either. No, They're no, just doing their not, job, no, right? No, no. So we have no, to make a distinction between people doing their job They've laid the foundation well. for a team that could okay. possibly one day win something, Probably all right? Let, let, let's just quickly look at what uh, Nick Cohen, who's a columnist with The Observer, because I think he's onto something here. He wrote of Gareth Southgate quotes. He's a gentleman. He's polite and self-deprecating, but, and this is crucial, he's ambitious and successful oh. with it. He comes from a better version of England than we are used to seeing. Not sure what he means in the last bit there but what I think what I think you saw with Southgate was uh, clearly he related with the players very well mm -hmm. he related with the fans but what did it for me uh, as an old journalist old newspaper man in every sense of the word is that before one game and I can't remember which it was the team sheet or they, they got some tactics or the what the, the press got hold of a yeah, team yeah. sheet now you'll know there are other managers who would have asked for a federal inquiry oh, how that happened yeah. journalists would have been yeah I'm not talking to him or to her they yeah. don't come in. what does Southgate do media's doing its job media's doing its job that's what those folks now that I thought mm. and I read that and I thought Hello, that actually is a very wise young yes, man yeah. who's got it and realised what's going on. It's clever, exactly. Clever, clever, clever. You realise yeah, that. Role There's I'd no point. Say role model. I'd go as far as role model. Yeah, yeah, role model, role model definitely, but that. hero. No. Michelle, I mean, don't you think that in Brit Britain we we lack people who are, you know, new men, empathetic? Yeah, well, I wrote on my paper courteous. role model because exactly. I don't see him as a hero. I reserve hero for people that you've just been describing and all the rest of it, but I do think he is somebody for young people in particular to yeah. look up to because in the society today, I worry about the whole reality TV, mm. and I can say this because I've been on it, but the whole get famous for not a lot, yeah. you know, get rich quick, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I see when I look at Gareth Southgate, etc. Here is somebody who's got a passion, that's worked hard, that's achieving success. I'm sure he'll achieve lots more going forward. And as a young as a young person, I would like them to look at those at people like Gareth Southgate and look at him and go, if I get my head down, if I work hard, if I've got a passion and a talent, I can achieve. I can achieve, and I think we need more of that it's in our country. It's instilling that belief yeah. in the young I people that I if like you work hard enough and if you do the right things, you can actually achieve something. Can we something just remember life? that I think hero heroism it, it fits because remember he he mucked up that penalty. He put it, he was sacked as a manager. He had All the hopes of the right. entire, of course, nation resting on his shoulders. Can you imagine the pressure? His comportment, his dignity his modesty, his ability to say the right thing at the right time, I think, gives from him, he is a national hero. And what is interesting is the discussion that went on about when he was appointed, I mean, was... I know. Because he's like that, was he tough enough? Yeah. 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 Right? Now, what we all know is that management isn't about being tough anymore. Management no. is about having a strategy and convincing yeah, people to yeah. do it. And yet, a lot of it, if you ask him, because he, he's been asked whether he thinks the players are heroes, and he said, no, they're just no. doing the job. And yeah. if you remember very early on, he went through a marine, he took the players to a marine yeah. training base where they That's hold right. you yeah. underwater and drag you. And he said afterwards, these are the blokes who are heroes. People who go out to Afghanistan, yeah. we're not heroes. Yeah. So, again, it's this tremendous grounding There's that a lot has. of humility around the guy, which I like. He, he's, he is, what you're saying, he's grounded yeah. and he's passed that on to the team. And that resonates yeah. through the wives right, not strutting standing. around in the boot on the way. Are we getting through? I think you're right. I think hero maybe is a bit over. Hero's a bit strong. But there's been a wonderful... So that's the end of that. All right, <laughs> no, you win. You win. <laughs> At least you win on something. I've there never known you lose it's... before. It's... No, I'm prepared to concede. But <laughs> there is a lovely suite of tweets about Gareth Southgate Wood, which I'm going to show you. Oh, I love you. that you... This is a new model of, of modern masculinity. Hashtag Gareth Southgate would give you his portable charger <laughs> while he's on 1%. That's brilliant. Let's have another. 
Hashtag Gareth Southgate would proofread your CV and get back to you with constructive <laughs> feedback within an hour. Let's have one more. Hashtag Gareth Southgate would know what day to put the bins out <laughs> after a bank holiday and would let all his neighbours know. Justin. So this is Gareth right. Southgate would well, put the, the check new, in the post. It's That's the new the paradigm thing. then of modern masculinity. It's not kind of, you know, breaking, smashing up restaurants. No. And we're not thinking about footing the bill, but actually being responsible, being <laughs> empathetic to he, both he teams. He would also play Raheem Sterling, who couldn't hit the floor with a hat. <laughs> and the, and the, 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 other, the other thing they've done, the FA, which, he's, which he's played a little part, is, you know, if, you, if you're the manager of, if you're the manager of an, a Premier League side, you don't really like international football because they take your players away yeah, yeah. and they send them back, damaged. sometimes, yeah. damaged yeah. goods, you know, and yeah. you get really fed up with that. So then he spent an awful lot of time talking to Premier League managers, getting around. That getting getting that really relationship that they're willing to help. You sp have you spent a lot of time with him? Have you met him well, a lot? Well, I knew him quite well when I was at the FA. I don't, I'm not... No, no, no. Mate, but but I what's your impression him? of him? I knew him? Oh, I think he's very thoughtful. Uh, he's very different, isn't he? He comes from that Arsene Wenger school of management, really, isn't mm. he? That, that, you know, like Arsene Wenger, you know, always... He's very different to... Very he, he took it from Allardyce, didn't he? From San Allardyce. Yes, he's very different from I mean, San Allardyce. I mean, that's chalk and cheese, isn't it? I know. I mean, he only got the job because Allardyce got himself into problems. And we Weirdly, I just spent some time with Sam Allardyce and I said, what's Hello. your message for my son who wants to make a career in football? And he said, you've got to be so tough and mean. You've got to have a really tough, mean streak. And look at Gareth Southgate. Yes. He can, can well, be he more probably different. has got a tough streak. I mean, because he, he did drop players that... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, he, and he did not yeah. take players that yeah. he rejected. But you can be tough without being unpleasant or mean. Good. On I that note... What's look alike. What's he going to do now? <laughs> 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 yeah. On that Come note... We haven't been short of things to make us feel patriotic recently, but if football isn't your thing, how about this? This week saw the 100th oh. anniversary of the Royal Air Force, and boy, did they mark it in style. Almost a hundred planes representing the RAF over the years flew over the Mall and Buckingham Palace in London, watched by a crowd of thousands, including Her Majesty and members of the royal family. For ruling the skies for the last hundred years, to all those in the RAF, past and present, you are our top guns of the week. Absolutely, yeah. They're heroes. Do you know yeah, what I mean? That's, yeah. that's where your heroes are coming well, from. We salute, we salute <laughs> them all. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's it 100%. for this week. But if you'd like to join in the debate, just search for the pledge on Facebook or Twitter. Thanks for watching.